Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about the highest expectation of players coming into this NBA draft. We're talking about a man that played in Australia, in the NBL, and frankly dominated while he was there. We are talking about none other than Alex Saar. As of right now, he's the potential number one draft pick, has a lot of hype around him, and we're going to talk about my thoughts on whether he can be efficient in the NBA, elite in the NBA, and ultimately why I think that the answer is no. I think it's more likely that Alex Sar will be a bust instead of an elite player, and we're going to discuss why. Let's go. All right, so first off, we're going to break this into three categories. We're going to talk about creation on offense. We're going to talk about punishing help, and we're going to talk about spacing out on offense to make sure you give your, essentially the rest of your players more room to work with. So let's start with the simplest, start with spacing on offense. So last year, Alex Sar in the NBL, NBL shot about 29% with fairly low volume. The first red flag with this is 29% isn't great. It's just not great, especially on low volume. And so our defense is going to need to respect him on the perimeter. So as this ball screen happens, both the players go with the ball. Hey, they're not worried about Sar on the perimeter. As the ball gets swung around, jab, but no real rotation. If the G League, they're not worried about your three-point shot. In the NBA, they're probably also not going to be worried about your three-point shot. The reason I picked this clip in particular, or this game in particular to watch, is because this is against the G League Ignite, so it's on an NBA court, probably against more athletic defenders than he's used to as well. So one un other important thing is I'm not cherry-picking which moments. I'm essentially picking which ones fit into this category, good or bad, and we're just going through them shot by shot. Okay, so we see Sar. He's going to space out here in a second. Ball gets moved around. As the ball gets deflected, we see a Kind of low shot clock. We have three seconds, probably enough time for a kick. However, Sar chooses to shoot this difficult mid-range jumper, and he is blocked. Okay, so if he's shooting 29%, defenses are going to be totally okay with him shooting this kind of ball. And currently, he's essentially willing to shoot that ball. And so my first reflection is, as far as spacing, he is not going to be super high level. That being said, for a star, I think spacing is the least important of everything. Okay? Because if the offense is going through you, think Giannis, think Joel Embiid, it's okay for you to not shoot that well as long as you can still dictate that people come out to you. Okay? So one of the big things is he's long and he's athletic. And so if you get them moving in transition, he's going to be able to finish with efficiency. And he's shown that pretty well. However, the bigger question in my eyes is whether he can do the same thing in the half court. Okay, we see this set was drawn up specifically for him. We have motion on both sides to try and get him working one-on-one. -on -one. This is with probably someone who's not as good of a defender as defenders in the NBA. And he's essentially met with resistance. And he actually travels with this initial footwork up here as well. Both not great signs. All right, again, we see action initiated for him. He's coming off a the screen. There's screens over here to occupy defenders. He's got one-on-one -on -one with this defender. He does. Okay, he goes downhill and shoots a very off-balance shot that bricks off the backboard pretty bad, doesn't even touch the rim. And so that's also semi-concerning. So frankly, against G League players, what I'm really looking for is he should be able to essentially win every one-on-one -on -one battle here if he's going to be elite in the NBA. And the fact that he's getting essentially handled by this defender right here is... Very concerning. Like, he'll definitely get better, but oh, I don't like him having to settle for difficult mid-range step-back jumpers that is not, not efficient NBA basketball. However, that being said, maybe as a small sample size, maybe that defender's better than average or has certain tendencies. Um, and so let's move on to the third category, which is whether he can essentially punish when the help rotates to him if he's able to create efficiency. So he has to be able to create efficiently in the first place which I personally don't believe he can yet. However, that being said, he's still been going to be given opportunities in the NBA. And so if he's able to create and force the defense to adjust, so defense helps over here, is he able to punish them effectively? And so we see as this ball goes up, or as he gets to the middle right here, open player, open player, and he chooses to force the ball contested, and he gets bailed out with a foul call. However, I don't know if this actually was a foul call. It wasn't called by the, the ref right here. It was called by the side official. Maybe somebody got a piece of his arm, and so he went up through contact. Maybe. 
but that's best case scenario. All right, so as this ball gets swung around here momentarily, okay, so first off, where's the defender? Doesn't care about him shooting. We already talked about how they didn't give him any respect space in the perimeter, and that still stays true. Okay, as this ball goes up, it's going to get swung out. Okay, so Sar in this situation essentially is able to go downhill, and the defense is out of rotation because of that missed shot and the long rebound. And so he is able to find this player in the corner. That being said, this is not a super high-level pass, so it's good that he saw this, but it doesn't really show that he's going to be able to pass efficiently in the long run. Okay, example number three. As the ball gets moved around, we're going to see it get swung to Sar. Okay, so Sar gets the ball in the middle. Where is the read? Okay, both defenders come in. Eight's open in the corner. I don't know if he's a good shooter, but he's open in the corner. And this defender, or this offensive player, is going to cut. Okay, so Sar should either pass to this guy or hit this cutter is definitely going to be an open dunk. Instead, he throws it to where the cutter came from. So I get it. This is easy in this, or this is easy to mess up in this situation because things are moving around. However, it is something like elite level players are aware of this and are able to know whether this is a shooter or a cutter. And he is unable to make that distinction on the fly. And so our last example is uh, he gets a very nice block on defense. Okay, and then pushing in transition, is he able to create efficiently? So we see one hand and then you have immediately digging in there and uh, he coughs up the ball. Okay, so there is a questionable decision maybe to try and go through this lane in the first place and then unfortunately also not strong enough to maintain possession of the ball through there and or force a foul call maybe he gets a foul call in the NBA I don't know but also semi-concerning so in those three areas of spacing I gave him not a good spacer can't shoot the ball very well from perimeter again could change two able to create efficiently on his own Certainly not in this game he was not able to, and possibly he can against different defenders. However, if the G League player was able to efficiently contain him, probably not going to be able to create efficiently in the NBA also. And then three, was he able to punish any help or rotation that came this way? And he wasn't. In all of the examples in the first half of this game, he was not able to punish them efficiently at all. So, then... The question is, why does he have all this hype in the first place? And he has hype because he's a really long athletic defender who has exciting highlights. He has highlights because he has dunks like this. The issue is, none, all, very few of his highlights are created from himself. They involve someone else creating rotation. So right here, drive, drive comes. And then he finishes because the help came off of him in the first place. And then two... The defensive highlights he has are all blocks around the rim. And while that's fantastic, the issue is defense in the NBA won't be as concrete as this because he's going to have to be on a post player. I mean, you can maybe have a center and him out there as well and then have him on a guard. But then the issue is the guard is going to have a lot of strength on or a lot of speed on him in space. So... I think the issue with Alex Sar is he's very catchy to watch him work one-on-one. -on -one. However, in the NBA, I think he's not going to be an efficient player. If you disagree with this, which hopefully there are quite a few people out there that disagree with this, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments um, because I think disagreement's frankly really, really healthy. However, that being said, my final prediction is that Alex Sar is much more likely to be a bust than to be an elite level player. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a blessed rest of your day.